So what are some of the, you know, kind of, again, so now we, we know the process and it's expensive. Um, we know kind of when it's time to start, to start seeking this out. Um, but, but I think my, my really kind of overall thought is, um, how do you even enforce like there's, because now we're dealing like, let's say that I go to all the trouble and do why was, and I, I do all that, spend all these money. We're talking about anonymous people that are anywhere around the world that are, that are maliciously going to attempt to use, use my brand for scams used. Like we see it every single day on, on Twitter. Um, we saw a really, you know, just beyond amazing, uh, instance where some random person registered like Northrop Grunham and paid $8 and said, hey, we're stopping business in this part of the world. And it was a you know massive issue. Like, how do you deal with the anonymous people um, that are attacking your brand at that point? It's, it's well, in short, it's very difficult. Um, <laughs> it's not impossible because if you can't, I mean, that's, that's one thing about Web3, the decentralized nature of everything now may, does make it harder to find infringers. You know, if they're somewhere, I'm not picking on a country, but let's say they're, I'll just say somewhere in Eastern Europe <laughs> and, you know, there's, they're a hacker. They've come up with something. They figured out a way to use your mark in the context of a domain name in a way that might be confusing to consumers. It's often next to impossible to identify who they actually are. So in those situations, you do have another route, which is to go to online service providers and ask them for help. So some of them will take down all of the, the major ones have complaint features and buttons. You can go and submit information. You can get websites taken down. When it comes to domain names, you can file, you can do anything from filing a domain name arbitration proceeding with ICANN to going directly to the registrar and saying, I want this taken down. Here's what I have to show that they're using this for bad purposes. Um, I mean, this is not uh, a scientific figure. It's just my own estimate, but I would say well over 90% of domain names right now are registered through privacy services. So it used to be, you could go onto the who is databases and find out yeah. exactly who registered a domain name, but not even those names were always real. Now it's, you go and it's domains by proxy or an organization like that. Um, but, you can go to the registrar, you can go to ICANN. There are other ways to tackle this. It's just, there's no getting around the fact that when you create a, a, a an entire system that is decentralized and that cherishes anonymity, it's always gonna be a challenge to find who's doing what. Love it, love it. And I think one of the challenges as well is that it's a big game of whack-a-mole. It's like, it is endless. It's not as if you deal with it, you've gotten it all down and now you could rest. It's like you could never, ever rest. If your brand is important to you, if uh, it's gotten, and the more successful it is, the more you're going to be whacking that hammer. Um, yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. And it's challenging. I think, I think even before the, the rollout of so many new GTLDs, you know, when you just had .com, .gov, .edu, you know, it was a little simpler. But even then, if I said, hey, you should proactively go out and register every domain you can think of in those five, with those five TLDs that incorporates Y Whales, you could come up with hundreds of various Y, y Whales Inc., you know, just tack on other letters to it. And it, yep. so Ronnie's right. It's, it's whackable, but you know, there are things you can do to, at the end of the day, hopefully minimize uses of your brand that really would hurt you and confuse people and, and leave, you know, registration of domain names that might bother you, but they're not really hurting you. Just leave them be. 